Welcome to the Night Sky, your monthly guide to the best objects and events in astronomy throughout the year. Whether you're a casual fan of space or have years of experience in amateur astronomy, there'll be something in this video for you to go out to see and image from your own backyard. Now let's begin our journey into space by taking a look at the best meteor showers coming up for the month of July. Meteor showers are great because you don't need any equipment whatsoever to go out and see them, other than maybe a lounge chair. For the month of July, there's a major and minor meteor shower that we're going to focus on that's going to primarily be significant for those of you living in the southern hemisphere. The first one we're going to talk about in the video today is the Southern Delta Aquarids, which as we just mentioned is going to be best viewed by those of you that live in the southern hemisphere. To see it, go outside around midnight on the night of July 29th into the early morning of July 30th and face towards the east. There you will find the constellation Aquarius that this meteor shower emanates from. A rate of 15 to 20 meteors per hour for those of you living in the southern hemisphere and 5 to 10 meteors for those of us in the northern hemisphere can be expected on most years and thankfully the moon will be completely out of the way for the shower this year. Also emanating from this part of the sky and peaking right around the same time is the Alpha Capricornids meteor shower. This is a weaker shower with only 5 meteors per hour, but if you're already out, you might as well see if you can trace any meteors coming out of the Capricornus constellation as well. These aren't the most impressive meteor showers that we have this year, but it can still be fun to go out and try to find a few streaking across the night sky on the evening and morning when they peak. Always be sure to get to as dark of a sky as possible and look at the widest field of space that you can facing the direction and the constellation in which they emanate from. As we leave behind the meteor showers of Earth's atmosphere, let's go deeper into our solar system by taking a look at the phases and events with the moon for the month of July. It begins with a first quarter moon coming up on July 6th. July 13th brings a full moon to light up the sky and ruin all of your astrophotography plans. My wife says I'm too hard on the moon, but it seems like whenever the clouds are gone, the moon is out. July 20th brings the last quarter moon with the new moon occurring on the 28th. The moon makes some close passes to the planets this month, meeting up in the morning sky with Saturn on July 15th, Jupiter on the 18th, Mars on the 21st, and Venus on the 26th. The moons meet up with Mars as of particular interest this month because of how close it's going to be. Depending on where you live around the world, the moon and Mars are going to be maybe one or two degrees apart, or the moon might briefly move in front of Mars from our perspective. Now this event is called an occultation. And it's only going to be visible for some people that live in certain parts of Northwest Asia and certain parts of Southern Japan. So for my subscribers that live in this part of the world, please let me know if you're able to get out to see this event in the comment section below. After weeks of us enjoying the planets lined up in the early morning sky throughout June, they slowly begin to break up, beginning with Mercury moving from an early morning to an early evening target from the beginning to the end of July. Venus continues to slowly move closer to the horizon as it begins its month-long transition back to being a sunset target later this year. Mars starts off the month being best viewed probably around 4 or 4.30 a.m. in the morning, as it continues towards its close approach to Earth in December. Jupiter will be high enough for observations beginning around 3 to 3.30 a.m. by the middle of the month, with comfortable views of Saturn beginning around 2 a.m. in the southeast at the start of July, with that changing to midnight by the end of the month as it becomes an evening target for us to enjoy starting in early August. 
Uranus comes into close contact with Mars at the end of July, and Neptune sails right along the nighttime sky with Jupiter for the entire month. In terms of comets for the month of July, we've actually got a pretty decent one that can be viewed with larger telescopes. Go out about an hour and a half after sunset and look for the comet PanStars with a telescope. Depending on your light pollution, you'll probably need something like a 5-inch telescope or larger to make out any of the faint fuzzy details of this comet as it travels through the constellation Ophiuchus. Look for it to make a close approach to M10 and M12 for some wonderful images for those of you that are doing long exposure astrophotography. Please follow and tag me over on Instagram at Late Night Astronomy to share all the pictures of the night sky that you're taking, whether it be with a cell phone or a DSLR or even more sophisticated astrophotography equipment. And if you're enjoying this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. As we move beyond our solar system into objects that are in deep space, it's important to know that the objects on this part of the list are going to be a little more difficult to find and in most cases will require a telescope. However, there are a few that you can go out and see with the naked eye or just a pair of binoculars. Let's begin our tour of deep sky objects this July by going outside and looking up until we come across the constellation Hercules. It's in this region of space that we find one of the most impressive globular clusters in the summer sky, M13, the Great Hercules Cluster. Begin studying it at low magnifications as its hundreds of thousands of stars slowly resolve and reveal themselves to you. See how far you can push your telescope's magnification limit while still being able to sharply reveal the dense star field at its core. Let's move down from the constellation Hercules to the constellation Lyra, which is personally one of my favorite portions of the sky to look at during the summer months. It's here that you're gonna find three distinct objects that really show the beauty and complexity of the night sky that we go out to see and image. Let's begin by taking a look at one of the brightest stars in the night sky, Vega with its beautiful blue tone popping right out of the background of space. After you found Vega, move on to the second target in Lyra, the double-double binary star system. What appears as one star to the naked eye under most conditions will be split into two stars with binoculars and four stars at high magnifications if your telescope and sky conditions can handle it. On clear and steady nights, I can split them to four stars using my 8-inch Dobsonian telescope at around 200 times magnification. Our deep sky object tour this July continues with one of the most unique objects in the night sky, the remnants of a star that blew away its outer gas layers leaving a white dwarf star at its center. We call it the Ring Nebula. The best views through my telescope are normally around 100 times magnification but on nights with a steady atmosphere, I can get some remarkable views of the outer edges and interior of this distinct circular cloud floating in space at around 200 times magnification. I've got a video that covers some more deep sky objects for the summer sky, and I'll be sure to leave a link to it in the description below. Those are just some of the best objects and events that you can get out and see in the night sky this July. Please let me know in the comment section below what you're able to get out to observe or image and anything that you would add to this list to share with others. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.